Hey y'all, hi. It is time for another episode of New Makeup Hot Takes. We have so much to talk about today. I have so many tabs pulled up. I'm gonna refrain from blathering at all here in the intro, maybe for the first time in my life, because I feel like we really need to jump right into it. If this is your first time to my channel for some reason, this is like your first video of mine that you've ever watched, then welcome. I'm delighted that you're here. My name is Hannah. This is a beauty channel, but I try not to promote overspending on my channel. So when I'm assessing new makeup, I'm usually doing it with a bit of a grain of salt, in some cases looking for a reason not to buy something instead of a reason to buy something. In other cases, taking kind of a step back and looking at trends at large rather than giving commentary that just feeds the frenzy of shopping. So if that sounds good to you and if you like this video, I hope you'll subscribe. And now let's go ahead and get into the meat of this video. New makeup, hot takes, new makeup, hot takes. I actually do have one thing to say before we start. Very quickly, I keep forgetting to to tell you that Joe's podcast, my husband Joe, wrote and produced this brilliant six episode podcast. It's now available on YouTube with captions. Like the entire script of the podcast pops up on the screen as you're listening. And because it is a cheeky, raunchy take on Shakespeare that is literally in Elizabethan language and in iambic pentameter, like in poetry, in the way that Shakespeare is, there really is something to be gained from listening and reading at the same time. And even if you already listened to it all the way through, even if you loved it, there are definitely going to be nuances that you pick up when you're able to read along. So I'll link, of course, all of that down below and I highly recommend it. I am so prepared today with new, oh, I forgot to move to the side. I'm so glad I remembered. <clears throat> I am so prepared today with new makeup hot takes. I have actually grouped things into categories because there are so many things I want to talk about. I need to do like bunches of them together rather than just release by release. And these are the most interesting times, right? These are the most interesting new makeup hot takes when there are trends or just themes in the market, different brands doing sort of the same thing in one way or another. So we're going to start with color corrector, which, you know, has been trending for a long time. But we have two heavy hitters, I feel, in the makeup world releasing color correctors, YSL and Tarte. Tarte is doing a color corrector version of Shape Tape, and YSL is doing a color correcting primer. When it comes to color corrector, I am only interested in one color, which is green, and I am an aficionado of green color corrector. It's the type of makeup that I use every day when I do my makeup. I've done reviews where I'm comparing, contrasting a bunch of different green color correctors. I've tried a bunch of them. And I can just tell by looking at these listings that the greens in both of these releases are too pale. I use green color corrector specifically to counteract redness in my skin. I think a lot of, I mean, like that is what it's for. Like that's what we're using it for. But because I also have olive undertones, not exactly golden or yellow, but definitely not pink, like more golden yellow than pink. And pink tends to be sort of the opposite. That sort of pinky whiteness is like the opposite opposite of what I want to bring to my face. When I have a green color corrector that's mixed with a bunch of white pigment, the effect of the green and the effect of the white pigment kind of counteract each other because the green tries to dampen the redness, but then the white mixes with the red on my skin and kind of turns it into pink. So based on my vast experience, I'm not interested in trying either of these. All three of the YSL products in this release look really pale. Like they all look like they're mixed with some white pigment and are going to give you not only the tint that's in them, but a kind of paler version of whatever the natural tint of your skin is. For some people, that's desirable. I mean, I do try to lighten my skin a couple of shades to match my neck. It's just I try to do it without turning it pink. But it seems like a pretty specific niche in the market for that entire launch. And with the Tarte release, the yellow and the orange and the red are pretty satisfyingly deep, but all of the rest of them look pretty brightened again, mixed with white pigment. Some color correctors are like milky in this way, and it's funny in spite of the fact that I'm so pale, I found that I have better results when the color's a little bit more saturated because then I can get it to do whatever I want. Okay, next up we have a barrage, a barrage of complexion releases. And a lot of them are on the kind of glowy, tinty side. This doesn't surprise me at all. I mean, we're knocking on the door of spring. 
Pretty much all of them are off the table for me because of the issue that I talked about in the last new makeup hot takes video when I did hold forth in the introduction, or maybe it was just the beginning of the video, for like 10 minutes before I start talking about product, about how few makeup brands, when they release foundation products, cater to people with desaturated skin at any depth. I'm not even going to dip into the topic in this video. I'll just refer you to that. I'll put a time-stamped link to the part of that video where I described what I'm talking about so that you can go and watch it and get caught up if you weren't there for that one. But what I'll say is that as someone with a desaturated skin, it makes it really easy to look the other way when a brand releases a complexion product. So the Huda Beauty, is that what this is? Yes, Huda Beauty Glow Wish Concealer. It is a concealer, but I think because it's spring launch, they're leaning into this glowy, lightweight, serum-y kind of vibe with the branding. A lightweight, illuminating concealer that melts into the skin. In theory, something that I would love, the pictures of the swatches especially, just the four lightest shades look extremely saturated with either pink or yellow pigment, so none of them will work for me. It's an easy pass. Same thing with the Burberry Beyond Wear Perfecting Matte Foundation. I mean, a matte foundation, a kind of heavy matte foundation from a luxury brand isn't really the kind of thing that would be on my radar anyway, but the lightest shades have that very, very bright peach pigment that I know just looks orange on me. One of the most intriguing things here, I think, is a drugstore serum, like a drugstore skin tint, but it's from Maybelline and it's in the Super Stay line. One of the things that turns me off from skin tints and skin serums is that they tend not to be very long wearing and I don't like it when I touch my face partway through the day and it leaves literally a fingerprint. You can see all the way through to my bare skin underneath it. There's so many foundations that have been released over the past several years that behave that way and that's just like the vibe like that's how they are and you just live with it because it's a tint and you're living your best life you know so I'm intrigued by a super stay tint and by a drugstore product that is along the lines of what I think mostly prestige brands like high-end brands luxury brands mostly those kind of brands that have been doing this so far it's a little bit hard to tell from the picture here I actually think the whole shade range isn't represented here I will be surprised if there's a shade that works for me in in this. I'll be surprised if I end up trying it, but it's more of note, I feel like, than any of the others, and definitely more of note than the lightweight serum foundation from Say. Glowy Super Skin Lightweight Hydro Bounce. The lightest shade looks very promising, like relatively neutral to me, and it also looks like they have some nice olive shades in other depths as well. That's what it looks like on my screen. But you know, I mean, you know if you've seen my review of Say. I did like a brand review of Say a couple of years ago and hated everything. <laughs> like, it was one of those reviews where I was just like, no, 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 across the board. One's across the board. And one of the issues was that the shade for the product that they had then, which looked exactly like this. I mean, maybe it had sunscreen in it and that made it different, but it was some sort of foundation skin serum tint hybrid business. The listing on the website looked like a perfect match for me. Like it looked perfect. And then it arrived and it was several shades darker and more more peach than the swatch looked on the website. So fool me once, say beauty. But that's all the chances you're going to get. All right, next category is high-end brands duping luxury brands or designer makeup, I guess, maybe is what you would say. So, you know, we've got drugstore makeup and then we've got this middle tier of makeup that is like the kind of makeup that's in Sephora that's on the expensive side. Not cheap, you know, not super easy on your budget, but easier price points than brands like Charlotte Tilbury, Dior, Why? YSL. I mean, I think of Tarte as being a high-end brand and YSL as being a luxury brand. And some of that distinction has to do with like the genesis of the brand, who owns it, kind of where it comes from, if it's connected to anything else in beauty or fashion. A lot of it just comes from price point and branding. And when new brands come onto the scene, I think they kind of decide where they're going to fit into that system. And we see brands like Say coming along and being like, okay, it's sort of a high-end brand, but it has this accessibility about it maybe the price point's on the low-ish side for high-end, but it's still not drugstore, you know. So there are nuances. And the reason that I'm bringing it up, that I'm talking about both of these launches in the same segment here in the video, is that it is old hat at this point for drugstore brands to dupe high-end and luxury brands. We are always seeing
seeing drugstore brands coming out with a mascara, for example, that looks in its tube and the color and the font a lot like a Too Faced mascara. The name is different, but the brush is exactly the same shape. Everything about it is like wink, wink, nudge, nudge, telling you that they've tried to dupe the formula of this Sephora brand or Sephora level brand cult classic product, but it's, you know, $7.99 at the drugstore instead of being $20 or whatever at Sephora. That has been happening forever. But I feel like seeing a high-end brand, like a Sephora brand that still charges a lot, but not as much as some, transparently duping a luxury product that has done really, really well. Have we seen that before? Like, can you think of another case? Because there are two coming out right now. One of them is Tarte with the glow tape highlighters, an obvious dupe for the, you know, incredibly successful TikTok famous Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Spotlight glow wand. Like literally the same packaging, the same product, the same three shades. And then we have Too Faced over here with the Born This Way Healthy Glow SPF 30 Moisturizing Skin Tint in the exact same bottle as Dior Backstage Glow, promising everything that Dior Backstage Glow promises, fully duping a luxury product, like a really, again, Again, sort of TikTok famous, very successful luxury product. And it's just, it feels very low to me. I just feel like Tarte and Too Faced are disgracing themselves by doing this. Not only are these brazen and kind of cheek by jowl with the other products, like showing up in the same store sort of next to the Charlotte Tilbury display, we're gonna have this Tarte thing. Not only is that the case, but the price point's not that different either. I think that these Hollywood Tarte light ones are like, like $5 less than the Charlotte Tilbury, maybe $4 less. It's just like, who are they hoping to fool? Like, what are they hoping to get out of it? Do they not have any better ideas? All right, next category is lip jelly shine type things, like glossy, shiny, sloppy, goopy, jelly, glazy lips for spring, which I love, I'm really here for, in spite of my matte lip today. This is a category of product that I really like, but, and here we're putting on the reason not to buy a thing hat. This always gets me, like these always get me, and certainly this is the part of this video, this segment is the segment that has gotten the most in amongst me, like these are the products I want to buy, you know? So one of them is by NARS. It's the Afterglow Sensual Shine Hydrating Lipstick. I feel like they had an Afterglow Balm before, and now they've just made a lipstick version. The lightest shade looks like such a great, like, dirty nude, like a mucky, dusty, pale neutral. Mm, I want to buy it. Nabla has released something very similar, the Beyond Jelly Sheer Supple Lipstick. Really beautiful imagery. The packaging looks really beautiful. I appreciate the kind of close-up realism of the imagery in this Nabla marketing. I feel very compelled. Summer Fridays is coming out with two more shades of their kind of squeezy tube lip balm. A nice kind of middling pale pink called Pink Sugar and a bright red called Cherry. I actually have a tube of this product or I had a tube of this product that I used almost all the way up and it's really great. The pink is really calling my name. And then Stila with a really shiny lip oil that looks really pretty. Haven't seen much from Stila in a while. That's why I threw it in here. Heaven's Dew Gel Lip Oil. So again, not a lip gloss, but like a jelly, oily, sloppy lip shine. What's the reason for me not to buy any of these? I feel like they always look better in the marketing than they end up being for me, especially when it's this kind of thing in like a stick formula. I think I kind of prefer a product like this with a doe foot applicator, like really wetly slathering it on. I feel like a soft jelly product in a regular bullet format, it tends to get messy and sort of wrecked you know, the way that I want to use it. Sort of grasping at straws a little bit here because I really feel <laughs> like I want the NARS one. But what it is is the fantasy of having the lips in the imagery doesn't really pan out. It's nice to have a thing like this, but I think that when I see something like this released and I want yet another one, part of me is wanting the lips of the models that they hire to model this kind of thing. And I see the imagery and part of my brain is like, if I get it, my lips will look like that. But 
but it's not true. My lips will just stay the same shape and size that they are, and they'll just look the way that they look when I apply the one that I do have, right? The one from Make Beauty that I do have that I really love. I think I have like a ColourPop Luxe lip oil kicking around. I actually really love that formula. It's awesome and it's exactly what all of these are promising to be. None of these is going to make my lips look or feel any different than those products that I already have that I'm already using make my lips look and feel. And they get me every time, the marketing gets me every time, the desire comes from me every time, and I have to remind myself of that every time. So two eyeshadow palettes, I feel like of note, are eyeshadow palette releases of note from the past week or two. And both of them are offering something that I really kind of like, but I'm not interested at all in either of these palettes. So the thing that they're offering is kind of earthy color. So color that is a bit dirty, like is a bit nuanced, and then exciting texture mixed in and some slightly brighter color. Those are the kinds of palettes, like it, that's the balance balance of qualities that I tend to put together when I build my own palettes out of my singles. So I felt compelled when I saw both this Rare Beauty release, which is a, it's like a set of three palettes, and the Too Faced Italian Spritz palette. I have no desire for a Too Faced palette, and it's so surreal to see Too Faced continuing to like push the same button over and over again. I feel like they're departing a little bit with this, just a little bit from just like cake and cookies and just gingerbread men. And again, I like the color story. There are these sort of off jewel colors, mustard browns kind of, and then these very textured looking accent shades that are also quite grubby in their way. I'm way more attracted to it than I am usually to Too Faced palettes, but all of the mattes are the same. I mean, they're not all the same, but they all lean very orange, right? They all lean really, very old school, neutral in the eyeshadow palette, very orange. And if I were hoping, if I were in the market, for a single palette to get and just use and use and use until I had used it completely up, which is what I kind of used to do years ago before I got into this gig. This wouldn't be the one because they don't have any truly neutral or slightly cool toned mattes in here and they would all just look completely orange on me. And the same is a little bit true of the Rare Beauty. And the one on top in this image, it just looks very beautiful. The colors look beautiful. They make me want to touch them. The texture looks great. I love what we're being served here going into spring. Like if this is the spring I eyeshadow vibe. I'm going to be really here for that. I just, I don't like these little skinny moon shaped pans. Is that reason enough not to buy something? I mean, in this case for me, it is. They're not satisfying to me. I would be so drawn to this if they were in like a really tightly packed, wide panned grid. More Natasha Denona style, like the old school, big Natasha Denona pan, something like that. The gimmick of the shapes of the packaging is enough to turn me off, even though I think the color story is very well done for this rare beauty release. Okay, and last up in terms of trends that I spotted across brands and across posts, brands coming out with some sort of color splash bonanza thing, right? Like, we're cool now. We, we did, we're doing this color thing. I mean, Urban Decay, this has always been their thing, but I'm looking at the Urban Decay 24-7 Inks liquid eyeliner. So it's 24-7 eyeliner, but it's a liquid and, and this and has this like sharp brush, which I actually think is a really smart release from Urban Decay. Lawless, which I never talk about. I just, I don't really know what's going on with Lawless Beauty. I've never checked them out. But part of why I never talk about them is because I feel like they release the same colors over and over again, and they're just really, really run of the mill. I've heard the formulas are good, but it's just, they never catch my eye. And now here they come with this like lavender release. They're like busting out with color. And you know, if this was ColourPop or something, it would just be, it would just be another day at the ColourPop lab. But <laughs> but for Lawless, it feels like a, a big splash. And so they fall into the category of brands who are like, we're doing color for spring, colors in. And we also have Give Beauty, which is Gwen Stefani's brand, coming out with a bunch of paints, eye paints, eyeshadow paints, and a bunch of eyeliners. And they're all in these sort of grungy metallic colors. It just looks like a very color forward launch. This kind of makeup that sort of like art supplies and you like draw a line and paint and fill it in. And, and it's really all descended from the euphoria trend, you know. It still has a hold clearly on the brands, on what's being released, and on the 
imagery. I don't feel the need for anything like this. I'm actually really curious about the Urban Decay liners, the, the drawn on lines, because those graphic drawn on lines, that's really hard to do. That's like the hardest part of the Euphoria trend. And it's hard, especially to do them with crayon liners. I would so much rather try it with one of these ink liners, but I'm not out here waking up every day being like, I want to try a graphic eyeliner look. I mean, when was the last time I thought that? So it doesn't mean that I'm going to run out and buy one, but I, I just think that of the three, that's the canniest release here. And then lastly, I cannot leave off without mentioning the Pat McGrath bronzers because it's Pat McGrath and, and you know, it's always exciting when she does anything. They look beautiful. It's hard to tell what the shades will really look like from this imagery. In this imagery, the palest shade looks attractively neutral and just like the kind of blush I'm always looking for. It's something that I would have to see in store. I don't have much to say about this. I mean, Pat McGrath's makeup is really beautiful and it's nice to see her coming out with a solid collection like this. I'm not feeling compelled to run out and buy one, but I am curious to know what other people think of it when they try it. That is it. I'm coming back. I guess there's also a little eyeshadow quad with that Pat McGrath release. It's a collection. It's not just the bronzers. There's a actually really pretty lip colors, like this pale, dusty rose in a liner, a gloss, and a lipstick, and a really pretty neutral palette. I don't need anything like that, right? I don't need them. I'm not going to go out and buy them. But just classy. Classy and compelling as always. And it does look like at least one of the shades in the quad is a special shade, which is nice to see. I don't know if that's true if it's just how it looks, but hopefully it's true. Okay, that's it. Thank you for being here and watching me discuss new makeup. I hope that you enjoyed it. I always like it when I feel like things are trending. Color stories, types of makeup, ways of branding things, decisions in the boardroom. Like, I really love it when we can draw these connections between things for a lot of reasons, not the least of which is that it just helps take a step back. You know what I mean? It helps me take a step back rather than being like, oh my god, that's so beautiful. It helps me to be like, oh yeah, and that's one of the things that's trending. That color story is trending or that kind of makeup is trending. So yeah, everybody doing that right now. It just helps me feel a little bit less sucked in when I'm feeling like I have to touch it. I have to have it right now. I really hope you enjoyed the video. I appreciate you so much for liking, commenting, subscribing if you choose to do so. And I hope that you're remembering to take extra good care of yourself so that you can be the most effective version of yourself as you do your work in the world.